Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and I know you've probably seen this figure in one of the prior episodes. Yes, it is Page Puncher's Batman, but this customization is completely different to the other. The other was a black and gray, and this one is going to be black and red. So, along the lines of the Flashpoint Batman, but the design is a little bit different. Let me show you what I came up with. Like all other figures, taking it apart is going to be essential, especially getting into those crevices like the knee joints and elbows. However, for this figure, there is plenty of room in those knee joints and elbows, so we don't need to dremel it out or stand them out. So that gives us plenty of space to add our paint. Now, we could primer this thing entirely in a black or a gray, but since we're just going black for the body, there's really no need to primer it. So we're going to just add a tooth to it. It's kind of like primering, yes, but there's no actual color. I'm going to use the Liquitex Matte Varnish, and that's going to give the paint plenty of tooth to grab onto. And then we'll reseal it with the Matte Varnish because that's what the customer wants to see. This is a commission piece that is not mine, and therefore the idea comes completely from the owner. So let's take a look at the results of this product. So after spraying everything down with the Liquitex Matte Varnish, I then decided to paint the red tones first, and this is in a silver base, and then I added the Kamiya 27 red over that silver. And that way it gives me a metallic look. Now if I use metallic paint, it doesn't give you the same finish or even the same look. It looks this way, like there's actual foil or material, metal material, under that transparent red. And because this is a glossy, glossy red, it really doesn't need a protective varnish. This will protect the color or paint that's underneath there, and it's just gonna look completely awesome. I really like the way this high gloss red turns out. It takes a while to dry. Applying it like this is much quicker for it to dry. If you use a brush and Put it on there it does work however because it's so thick the viscosity is so thick it actually turns to like a honey and it becomes very sticky in brushing it on so you can only brush on a few strokes but by applying it with an airbrush you're able to cover all of those crevices in an even layer and then you come back in a second or third layer depending how intense you want those reds. And then of course I went back in and added the detailed black lines in the center of the pockets and then I went ahead and put another coat of red on top of that. Now be careful not to paint the inside of the belt because it will rub against the body or the torso. Now I've gone ahead and done the same for the emblem on the chest. I did not mask it out. I went ahead and just painted over the green. And then I went ahead and this time I did go back in with a brush and added a thick layer of the Timmy X27 over the red emblem I sprayed. It didn't have the same effect. Now the black I then went back in with a liner brush and painted those in close to the red areas. I did the same with the glove and of course the hand. I did mask it out and then I went ahead and I brushed it on for my third layer because I wanted it to be more intense. And this is the look that I've got now that I've added the blacks and the reds. Now on the blacks, between the actual suit and the body armor, it was difficult to differentiate the two pieces. So I added with a Vallejo color shifting paint, the blue tone only on the armor surfaces of the body. And that you can just barely see a hint of blue, but it still wasn't enough. I went back in and dry brushed very, very lightly silver over that blue 
to show the wear and tear. So I know that this is going to be interesting to most of you that like making capes because you've got two colors this time. And in the past, yes, I did also work with two colors, but this time it's going to be different. The last time I actually used a spray glue. This time I'm going back to the iron-on strip, which works out so much better. And for this red material, you do have to cover it with a cotton or another fabric because it will stick to the iron. So on this one, I have a blue strip underneath the red that I've already attached to the black, and I fold it over the edge to get this nice, clean seam, no stitching. Why did I do that? Because I don't like the way the stitching looks at the edge of the seam. So this way, it's a nice, clean look. So once you cut out your scallops by folding the cape in half and then cutting it at the bottom, and that just depends how many scallops you want, I cut four of them in here. And obviously because the material is loose, it doesn't quite grab when you're trying to cut it. So you will have a jagged edge, but the best thing to do is glue it down once you make your initial cut so glue that edge where you are cutting, just like you see here. Then go back in after your glue is dry and clean up your edges. Now I'm using a rotary blade. This is so much easier when the blade is new. Mine is obviously not that new. But when you've got a nice, fresh blade, the cutting is going to be that much easier. It's going to cut the material like butter. So be careful when you're cutting. And you can see now that after gluing the edge together, I'm able to meet at my ends or my edges and then have a nice clean curve for each one of those scallops. So you can go as deep as you want. You can make them as jagged as you want. It all depends on what look you want to have. This only provides an idea or basis for you to create your own cape. Now because uh, there's two different materials here, the blade will cut different. The black is a thicker material and the red is very, very thin. So that's why I had to glue it together because one will slide out from the other. And of course, once it's glued, it's easy to grab them together under that blade and make one single cut. In this case, I'm making a few cuts because my blade isn't very, very sharp. Once you've got a nice fresh blade, then you're set to go. These blades are sold in packs of two or four, depending where you get them. They start at $25, so they're, they're not cheap. Now, as far as sewing the edge, this is why I did not want to sew it. Look how bad it looks. I wanted a rolled hem, but it's got to be really thick, even if I do it manually. And at the bottom there, you see the stitching design that I'm contemplating on using for the cape itself for the wires to go into. I like this rib, but it's too prominent, too dominant on the outside. I'm going to have to put it on the inside. I like the stitching here. I love the way it looks on the outside, so that gives it a construction look, and we'll do that while I actually add both. This is the other reason why I decided to use the iron-on tape. This is done with a rolled hem foot, and it's just way too thick. So I decided to do this improvising both, the uh, sewn edge and then fold it over and glued. And no, I didn't like it. So I had to go back to this. This is so much cleaner and I still have an, a room for the wire at the top. So let's keep going. So now that we're at the sewing machine, we're going to stitch the design on the cape. And that design is that we want it to look like it, well, sewn together but we want a double line. So I've already ironed out my lines so that I can follow a pattern. If I do this blindly, my line will not be straight. So by ironing out the actual pleather and folding it 
where I need those folds and then ironing them in, it creases it enough that I can follow a line with the sewing machine. Again, if you want to actually use chalk and draw it on there, that's fine. Don't use a marker, uh, don't use a pen because you're not going to get those lines out of there. So the best thing to do is to crease it with an iron and then follow that line. If you want to be dead center on the line, that's fine. I went a little bit off center because I want a double line. So I want to go off center the opposite direction. And that way it looks like there's a cape construction with two pieces joined together. However, this is one piece. We're joining the piece on the inside by doing this and that's gonna keep that red fabric from moving. Unfortunately, this is a slow process, so take your time and repeat it only on the actual pieces that are not gonna carry a wire. Now, if you want to have a wire in there, you're gonna have a need to leave extra space between those stitches. So if you have it too narrow, like I have right here, you'll never fit a wire in there. It's gonna be way too tight. Let me show you what this looks like, finalized. And this is not gonna have a wire, that's why I stitched it so close. This is the center piece, or the center scallop. And you can use your blade on the edge of the machine to cut that thread. And as you can see here, this is a small, narrow, or rib, you can say. Um, there's not enough room in there for a wire. It would need to be a whole lot bigger. This is what it looks like on the inside. So now it holds my material together. I don't have to glue it. Finished, it looks like this. So we've got two wires coming on the inside and going toward the outside. And I, as I mentioned, I put the rib on the inside so you don't have that dominant look on the exterior. You just have the stitching of the pieces that are supposedly joined together. And there's only two wires right here and then two wires at the edge so a total of four wires for this cape and we are going to embed those into the body so that it has a better anchorage and a better support for the fabric especially since there's two pieces of fabric joined together So cape installation can always be tricky because each figure is different, each cape is different. Unfortunately, that's why I have so many videos on making capes because they all have a different install. Now, I've found that the best thing to do is to embed the wire. So I've taken a small vise drill and drilled two holes into the back. And I've drilled two holes into the front where the cape will actually meet just above the armor. And it's a 364 fit in a vice drill. If you want to use a Dremel, that's fine, but use it on the slowest, slowest revolutions because it will melt your plastic if you're speeding it up too quickly. By doing it with a vice drill, you have more control of that drill bit not heating up your plastic. Now, make sure that once you actually drill it, you test fit your wire so that it glides in smoothly and you're not having to fight it later on. Make sure you have plenty of wire to use some pliers to put it in there. So now I'm gonna test fit my wires. I'm gonna have to bend these so that I actually have the angle I need. And just by putting it in by hand, yeah, this is great, this is gonna work. Now, one of the things that I did not do and now that I'm looking at the video is, I should not have joined that red all the way up to the edge on the, uh, the neck area. I should have left more space in black because I have to trim it. Now this is the cape finally installed. There's a few little touches I've got to do before actually showing you the final presentation. Let's take a look. So no Batman is really complete without his grapnel gun, and we've got to have to, uh, well, we've got to put one together. Here's a standard Western gun and a grapnel that came with one of the McFarlane figures. Personally, I don't like the McFarlane figure grapnel, so this handle's got to go. 
and because it's plastic it's going to be easy to work with just like the other and the best thing to do is cut off that handle and then trim it down and we're going to cut off the handle off of the gun just as well now the best thing to do is to uh, cut it right above or just underneath the actual cylinder and we're going to cut also the back of the cylinder where the hammer is now I've done this before and I did it a little bit different. I actually cut it off entirely and then I ended up gluing the hammer to the piece and it just didn't work. Well, it, it looks okay. This is gonna be better. So by heating up the knife, we're gonna cut off right at the base of the cylinder of the revolver and then dislocate it from the rest of the piece, keeping the hammer and the trigger. Now the job is to put it inside this actual round piece of plastic. So once again, let's trim it down just a little bit more because it's round, well it's not having a flat surface to hit into and glue down. So we're gonna cut off that end piece. Now it's flat and there, it's flat against the back where the hammer is. So we're going to switch tools now and now we're going to use this cutting wheel on the Dremel and we're going to cut into that round plastic to give it a groove for the actual trigger and hammer to fit into. And again, this is just something that I'm making up. There is no tutorial for it except this one. And it's a soft plastic so be very, very careful. It can slide out of your hand and you can actually hurt yourself so be careful. It's not a race. You have to test fit it every single time just to make sure that it fits snug. And then we'll just super glue it together. So we can't leave the grapnel gun without, well, a grapnel. And I've gone over to Lowe's and picked up this pack of assorted wire sizes. And this is in their, I guess their hobby section. And it's a couple bucks, but you get four different wires. They're actually more like rods. They're not bendable, so they are gonna stay, um, they're gonna stay straight, which is great. Sometimes you get those in those toys and those packages and the wires bend really easy well this is not so you're going to take a vice drill once again drill into the actual grapnel or the grapnel gun and give it enough free space for that rod or that wire and now it goes in just fine i don't have to fight it and it holds it and this one's six inches you can cut it if you need to I'm just going to use the whole thing because that's what I paid for. Now I've got these extra pieces of 3D printed batarangs. And these are going to work out great for making the end of the grapnel. So we're going to cut off the fins off of these batarangs and super glue them together at the end of that wire. And Wesley, thank you very much for these batarangs. These came out really, really handy for this project. So once you cut them down and glue them together to the end, it'll look like this. Now at this magnification, nothing looks fantastic. But when you hold it at arm's length or you put it on the shelf, it looks pretty good. 
at least for a toy. Now, once you've got it taken care of like this, you can go ahead and paint it to whatever you like. Black, silver, gray. Another holster for the grapple gun looks like this, and it's nothing more than a piece of styrene that is wrapped with fabric. The same as in the interior of the cape. Now let's take a look at the final product all cleaned up. I will now leave you with an uninterrupted look at the cleaned up product. This is a commission piece and that design it actually turned out pretty well. I may have to work one up for myself. I will also leave you with a before and after as a request from many of the viewers. Enjoy the rest of the video and of course if you like the video or if you have learned something today express it in the comments. I would love to hear your opinion according to the figure's design. And of course keep customizing your figures. We'll see you here next time.